All right, welcome back to Manor Lords. If you're just joining us, this is an extremely hard playthrough where we've started with absolutely no resources apart from two timber, and we spent the entire last episode clawing ourselves to the state where we have a town with a positive approval rate, and we're actually selling iron to finally generate some regional wealth. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna invest that first 15 regional wealth into upgrading this burgage plot to having a vegetable garden. That's just gonna make life a little bit easier in the long term when those vegetables start producing and getting added to our food pool to get a little bit more food variety. Couple of other things to do very quickly. One, um, Jack B. Nimble, sorry, Meg Leslie has asked me to rename their person to be Jack B. Nimble. So I'll do that quickly before I forget. And we need to also give our town a name. And there's been so many fantastic naming suggestions. I'll put some of them on the screen just now. Some really, really well researched ones with uh, looking into the French and the Germanic. And I really love that. And I really appreciate that. And thank you so much for doing it. There was, however, one that really stood out to me. If you've been watching my Manor Lords videos, I constantly call Burbage's, uh, Burbage, I get Burbage, Burgage, and Burgerage mixed up. So the suggestion of Bob's Burgage just really cracked me up. And that's what we're going to call this region. Uh, so thank you so much for making that suggestion. Um, so Bob's Burgage is here. These are, of course, Burgages, not Burbages. And I think that's going to remind me to call them the right name. We do have another problem. You see, the plan was originally that now that we'd reached this level of approval, we were going to upgrade these plots to level two. And we were going to use them to produce weapons and armor for our soldiers for the next phase. That's not going to work. As soon as we upgrade one of these plots to level two, what's going to happen is that they are going to have new requirements and they're going to be unhappy until those requirements are fulfilled. They're going to want me to build a inn and supply them with uh, beer. They're going to want an upgraded church and they're going to want more, more administration. So they're going to want a manor. So that's not going to work. We've got 186 days to get that to work. I have a new plan and I'll explain that once we fix a couple of problems in the town. First things first, unfortunately, this marketplace is no longer working. You can see here that the firewood stall is abandoned. Nobody will rebuild that firewood stall, even though we have firewood stored in our storehouse. We have um, 80 firewood stored here and they will bring the firewood to the stall, but no one will sell it. And then we're, what ha what's happening is our burgers are running out of firewood. The only way I can find to fix this is to demolish the marketplace, clear it out and rebuild it. The other problem is we've accidentally deleted this road at some point, so it needs to be rebuilt. It's a very important road because it's how people get in and out of their houses into town. I'm gonna to extend that road to here. Something else we need to fix is I actually forgot to build a well. And even though I realized at the end of the last video, I still didn't build that well. Now, very luckily for us, we have an underground river that runs right through our town and actually makes this position here the perfect place to place the well. So we're gonna put the well there, and then last but not least, we're gonna add a road from here to here, just to kind of connect everything up. Now, in order to get that built, we need a free family. So I'm gonna remove a family from the logging camp, and they can get on with building this, and we just need to wait for people to remove stuff from the supplies. While that's happening, and I'll fast forward a little bit, I wanna explain what the plan is to defend ourselves. The only way I can see us getting enough troops to make ourselves safe is to go with mercenaries rather than leaving an army. I cannot, it's okay, the socks were destroyed by weather, that actually helps us out. I can't see a way that I can get these upgraded, deal with the problems with approval, get enough men to raise an army and get the equipment in time. If we do raise these, we will be able to build the equipment and we will be able to get some people, but the drop in approval means that nobody new will move into the town and we really do need new people moving in here so that I can start assigning more and more jobs to people and get things moving faster. So I need to stay at level one so that everybody is happy and the approval rating is high and we have people moving in. So what I'm going to do is rather than going for this right now, we are instead going to build a manor house, which will allow us to tax our people. And we're gonna tax them on the sell, sale of iron, which generates a little bit of regional wealth. And that will hopefully, it's gonna be really tight, be enough to build enough of our own treasury, this, um, uh, this resource here, where we can hire mercenaries to defend ourselves against the first lot of enemies. That's really the only thing I can think of that's gonna get us out of the situation. Okay, the market is now clear. Let's build a new market. And that will fix our problems with people not getting food and things, because that isn't a concern I have. I don't wanna make this, this market too big. Um, 12 stalls is a little high. Let's go with nine stalls. You want to build massive markets because then if you build other markets in your town, the people won't move their stalls to them. They'll all just build them in this one market and people living further away will struggle to actually get food and things. That's another problem. And this town will eventually get quite big. Okay, let's speed time up. So we need to wait for the well to be built. We need to wait for the marketplace to be built. Then we're going to go back to producing logging, wood at logging camp because we need to get a manor house. The manor house requires five timber 
and 20 planks. And we need four planks to make those, four wood, sorry, four timber to make those 20 planks. So we need nine wood altogether. There's a new firewood stall already built. We now have a new family moving in. Let's get them named. I'll do that really quickly. Oh, a little bit early to do that because there's only one person living here. We need to wait for the whole family to move in. But we can now assign them to the logging camp, which means that that will get built as well. In fact, the well has been built and the marketplace has been built. So I only have one other construction I want to do right now. I want to make sure I always have an empty plot so that a new family can move into it. So I'm just going to add a plot here. It's important to make sure it has this background area. Sorry about the puppy barking in the background. I'll deal with her in a second if she keeps going. And we will go from there. So let's get that built. Let's get the wood um, produced as well. We need nine timber to move on to the next stage of the plan. And also we need to generate regional wealth. And at the moment we're not generating a lot. One thing I could do is I could go to the trade tab here and I could invest in a trade route for iron. So if I spent 18 regional wealth, that basically gets a trader to come constantly. And what he will do is he will only buy iron. So it means rather than a trader coming and like buying some of our iron, this person's gonna come maybe once a month and buy all of it. And that might be good a good investment, although I don't know if we have time to take advantage of that. The other thing I could do is I could spend some of our regional wealth on another ox, which will cost us 20 regional wealth, but it will speed up construction considerably when we get around to it. That's the food store built. That's people getting going to get more happy again. We just want to get this burbage, this burgage pot built. That's going to make a big difference. What's not going to make a big difference is going to mean that we've got people ready to move in. And I want to keep growing the village as much as possible. Do, is this house full yet? Okay, I'm going to name these people. I'll be right back. So we have Death by Dragon, sorry, Death Dragon, Alarm Response, and Rakar moving into that new burgage plot. And they will be very important as they cut down more trees for us. Once we've got this burgage plot complete, I will move a family into the saw pit so we can start producing the planks we need. And once that's done, we'll get the manor house built as soon as possible. I'm thinking about building the manor house maybe back here or possibly in this plot here. That actually might be a quite nice place to put it. Kind of just square this off and put it in the middle like it's a little estate. Also, that road isn't connected. So we could do something like bring this along to here and bring this here like that and then we can put the manor house down here a little bit away from the rest of the peasants but still close enough to the center of town that we're extending some of our reach over it i'm also just going to add a couple of more roads just kind of try and make this a little bit more organic so i'll have a road coming from here and i think we want to have a road coming over here as well just so that these places here are all kind of all connected through people have to keep coming through the center of town to get to places this road here i think should also connect up to here and then we maybe need actually want to have a connection from here out to here just so we've got people being able to move through at decent speeds. How are we doing for regional wealth? We're still at three. I think this is, that's Andrew Whitebart. Looking out for more merchants coming through. This is almost finished, which is great. We're up to three timber. Um, the puppy's going mad outside. I might have to go pick her up. Um, I'm not sure what's wrong with her. I think it's just because it's a funny day with the weather. Um, it does seem to set her off sometimes. Okay, that burger just completed. Let's get someone working in the saw pit. We want them to stop working as soon as we have 20 planks. Um, we'll keep time ticking forward. Trying to think what else could catch us out right now. We currently don't have a clothing stall. Uh, that is a concern. So nobody from the, the storehouse has built a clothing store, even though there's 16 leather there, which means we need to get somebody into the hunting camp so that they can do... No, we need to get somebody into the tannery so that they can build a clothing store, but I don't have a free family to do that right now. We can probably get the... What's full? Um... The saw pit's full, that's fine. We'll probably get the saw pit team once they've got their 20 planks to move into the marketplace to get that in place. That is unfortunately going to affect our approval a little bit, but we should be good for next month to get another family moving. I think on average with low approval, you get about one family a month. So it doesn't matter if we're not like on top of it all the time, as long as we're getting that one family moving in, it is going to make a big difference over time. One thing I am worried about is how little regional wealth we're generating because we tax the regional wealth. So we need the regional wealth to be coming in at a reasonable rate so that we're actually making some money off it. 160 days till the Raiders come. That is honestly a very big concern. Um, I am very scared that we're not going to make it. Once things have settled, I also have plans to move the logging camp and the Woodcutters Lodge to this forest here. And then we can start filling the town into this space here as well. I might end up moving the logging camp over here just to clear this area out, or I might just set it as the area they work in. But they're working fine for the moment. You can see they just cut that down there. Okay, that's 30 regional wealth. That's a great... I'm going to actually... I'm going to invest that right now into a trade route for iron. I think that's a good thing to do. So we'll spend 18 regional wealth to establish an iron trade route. And we're up to 10 planks. So we need two more planks and we're good to move on to the next stage. And people also finally have water, which is great. 
Whew, take a breath, chill. We're gonna we're gonna get through this. We will be fine. We just need to watch this little bit of an awkward period where we don't have any cloth any cloth in the marketplace, which may stop people moving in. As you can see, we have low population growth at the moment, which just makes things a little bit awkward. Let's just see how we're doing. Ah. Okay, we're up to still up to ten planks. Um, Unfortunately, I don't think we can fit a road in here. I've made it too tight. Yeah, there's no road we can fit in here. What we can do though, is we should be able to fit a burgage in this spot here, which should just like neaten this area out quite nicely. What I would love is a way to upgrade roads so they're not muddy all the time, to give it a little bit of a speed buff. That might be something that's coming later, I don't know. Um, but it is a problem right now. What are people unhappy about? I think it's clothing. Yeah, people are unhappy they don't have clothes. I promise you people, clothes are coming. They are actually in the storehouse, it's just nobody to sell them right now. We need another 20 planks and you can have clothes. In fact, do we have enough timber? Uh, so that's five, yeah, we have enough timber. So I'm actually gonna take them out of the logging camp and send them to the tannery. And that means that we will be able to get the clothing store built. Um, do we have raw, yeah, there's 12 raw, um, what's in here? There's 12 carcasses in here, which might be a problem. Oh, and we have a new family, that's amazing. There's 12 carcasses in the hunting camp, which I think might mean that people aren't gonna hunt. Um, hmm. Okay, so we've got a family moved into this plot here. So that's two people here. There might be one more moving in, so I'll wait for a second before I name them. Um, as we know, the job of a family when they move into is the first thing they need to do is to build a new plot. So I'm gonna cite a plot here. And I think if I do this properly, yes, I can fit it in and have an upgrade for it. So we're gonna have a new house there. And then we're gonna to need to get another set of planks once they finish building that, because we're gonna use some of them up here. So we're up to 15 planks. We're gonna need another little bit of wood, but getting the house up is important. Clothing stall is built. That's gonna bring people's approval up. That's excellent. Um, we needed that really badly. That's like a huge one. Whew, okay, you can feel the desperation. We're down to 140 days. It is like time is moving fast here. We're into late autumn. Winter's going to come soon. We're going to have to make sure that we're on top of it. We've got food for 10 months, fuel for seven months. We have to get the log cup, Woodcutter's Lodge going again. Um, that's actually going to be imperative pretty soon. Uh, but people will start getting happier and happier because there are clothes available. How are we doing on planks? We need five more planks. This is, we're going to get them coming in soon. Um, regional wealth is at 18. I could invest that into some other stuff. I want to get, what I want to get is a plot of chickens, which cost 25 and a plot of goats, which cost 25. Um, just to get passive hides and passive eggs, which again, will just increase the amount of food variety we have, which will make people happier, which will encourage more people to move into the town, which will mean we have more people to sign to jobs, which should make life easier. We're starting to kind of claw our way out of that problem. And then the next thing we're gonna hit is when we start upgrading things to level two. Okay. That's our sum. Wow, we've got 66 from the iron there. We're getting a lot of money right now. I will actually do that investment. Okay, and reap bandits have stolen some hides. So let's invest you into chickens. And we're going to invest you. Oh, no. Oh, damn it. Oh, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. I clicked the wrong button. Um, they don't have an upgrade. We need to actually get you to get goats. So I've just, what I've done is I've told them to build an additional house here, like another house we would live into. Unfortunately, I can't cancel that construction. So we're going to have to get more. Um, so we're gonna have to take you out of the saw pit and we now need to get timber. We have two timber at the moment. We need five timber to get this um, building built. So that's our next big job. Um, what else is happening? We have a team that aren't assigned to anything right now. Where do I want to put them? Um, probably in firewood, I think. We probably need some firewood. Do we have any construction at the moment? Yes, we have construction, that's right. We need to wait for that construction to finish and we need to get the timber in place. We actually have a lot of timber we now need to cut down because I accidentally built that extra house. That's annoying. Not the end of the world, but it is annoying. So we've got chicken coops here. And as you can see, we now have chickens in here. They'll start producing eggs really quickly. And we also have goats here and they're gonna give us um, hides, which we can tan. So even if the hunting camp isn't running, we'll be getting new clothes coming into the into our place. What are people complaining about? You don't have, or you're, I can't check your needs. Um, fuel, food, and clothing. So they just missed out uh, on buying them last time. They should fix that pretty soon. That does make me feel like we probably need to get more um, stuff coming in. Okay, the Burbage plot is done. Let's get you into the Woodcutter's Lodge and get the wood getting cut. And then we just need to wait for Timber to come in. Timbers is going to be the big one. And then I think we're going to build the Manor House. We could build the Manor House here, kind of in this plot, and kind of set it up as the Manor plot. 
Uh, there's not a lot I can do to prettify it really, uh, but we can just put the manor house here. I eventually want to actually build a wall around the town rather than building a wall around the manor. I don't want to build it too far away from our storehouse either because there's a lot of a, a lot of goods that need to come towards it. So I think I maybe will build the manor house here. I wasn't going to, and then we can just put some burbages, burgages here and here. Um, and then I, what I could do is I could relocate the saw pit. Um, I can't relocate the tannery. I can relocate the hitching post, and we can maybe build some more houses along here and maybe in here as well. What we could actually do is maybe remove this road and build a burgage here and then replace the road around it once we've moved the saw pit. But we can't do any of that until we've got the manor house built. That is like the number one priority. Okay, good news. We have enough logs now to build the manor house. And that is our next major objective. So I'm going to build the manor house um, in this open area. I don't think they want to be like assigned close to the road. We're going to put it right here. Um, we can, of course, add walls and gates and stuff. We're not going to do that right now. We don't have time. I am going to add a road, though, just to connect it to the road here. Um, in fact, let's make that a little bit fancier. What I'll do is I'll just pause the game again. We're going to alt-click that road to remove it. What we're going to do is going to bring the road down to here, and then I'm going to bend it this way, like this. We'll do like this, and then we'll do it like this. And that'll get started. I'm just going to sort the dog out, and I'm going to name this family, and I'll be right back. Okay, so the new family are Leandro, Scientologist, and Florb's Streampile. Um, amazing names. And don't these these names aren't just like random names. When I raise, when I levy my peasants to be in the army, these are the people that will be in the army. You will be fighting on the front lines to defend this town. You will be fighting and dying to protect this little pocket of civilization that we're creating. So don't just think I'm idly naming you. You will be, at least those of you who have been assigned to one of the male members, will be put to the front line. Okay, approval is up to 65%, which is really good. We now have 21 people living in our town, um, which is enough for 14 people to be levied as peasant army. But we have to get this. The manor house is like the number one priority right now. We have to get the manor house built as soon as possible. Okay, what is this? I think this is the, the saw pit, yeah. Once we've got the manor house built, I'm gonna move the saw pit away from, okay, winter's coming in. I'm gonna move the saw pit, I'm gonna move the hitching post. We might destroy and rebuild the tannery somewhere else so we can open this up for more housing. Um, how much, we've got five iron stored in here. We need to build up the Phrygian wealth now. I might look at building, getting another ox as well. We actually have enough regional wealth for another ox, but we need another timber for that, which I don't have available. The, the level one hitchy post can only have sp held enough space for one animal, and I've had some weird bugs with a level two stable and assigning multiple animals to it. So I'll probably just stick with multiple level one ones. Okay, so to get this built, they're gonna have to bring over five. Like they're gonna have to bring over so much stuff, which is one of the reasons I built it kind of close to the storehouse because a lot of the stuff they're building has to come from here. Okay. We've got room for two more families. So what I accidentally added was a little hut for another family. Ooh, that save just really lagged us out for a second. I had another hut here for another family to move into, and then we also have an empty house here for family to move into, which I really like kind of tucked up next to the church. And I also like how it's kind of connected it. We could kind of pretend that like the, the priest maybe lives in this house. One really interesting thing about churches in this game is you don't actually have to assign a family to them for the church to do its thing. Um, did someone just move in here? Yes, we have a second family has just moved in. Um, okay. That's another set of names. One second. So that means we now have Merciless Banana, Many Headed Mishap, because there's no room for the S, and B.S. Dean moved into the town. So that's great. That means we've got two families unassigned, which I'm happy with at the moment, because that means we've got two families moving construction materials to the manor house. And I think that's actually very important right now. We need to get this up and running. Um, as soon as possible, I think we're going to get a second hitching post built. We're going to move the hitching post. We're going to move the saw pit. And we'll get ready on like the next phase of expansion. We're going to move the logging camp and the woodcutter's lodge out to here. Um, and we'll open this area up for houses to be built in it. And obviously, we just need to make sure we get that treasure up. It is now November. We have 116 days before we are invaded. And I need I get taxes once a month. So we need to gain as much taxes as possible in that time if we're going to have any hope of levying anyone, uh, bringing in any mercenaries to help us. Mercenaries on average are costing around 50, oh God. So we've got the Battle the battle Brothers. We know we're gonna win if we get the Battle Brothers on our side. They're, they cost 50. The Ravenous Vultures here are very high level, as is the Flock of Crazy Geese, they cost a lot. If you can raise 50 to get something like the Battle Brothers, that would be huge. Even a unit of archers would probably be fine with our retinue also defend them. That's, um, that's a big one. 
I'm going to be naming retinue members after people who um, sponsored the channel in some way, just so you know. So that will happen when we've got our retinue built. Um, and I will be customizing the retinue a little bit to make them look cool. The other thing we can spend our regional wealth on is we can actually upgrade our treasury on, sorry. Well, there's so many people talking. We can actually spend it on upgrading the armor for our retinue as well. So that is an option too. All right, Manor House, I think, has almost all of the things it needs to do construction. It needs one more timber and one more stone, and then it'll be it'll be ready to go. And it's just quite fun to see the Manor House getting built because it is quite a complicated structure. Has it got everything now? It's still waiting on that last piece of timber and that last piece of stone. Here comes the stone. I think the timber will show up in a second. The ox will just be getting it. So there's the stone just arrived. Got lots of people here building it. BS Steam, we've got uh, Merciless Banana. We've got Rakar, Many-Headed Mishap, building my manor house. I don't even know if you can upgrade the manor house, honestly. I haven't pushed too far deep into the game. I wanted to get this challenge kind of up and running. So we're going to be discovering a lot of the next stage together, which is quite cool. Looks like production has halted until we get the ox here with that piece of wood. Where is the ox? Where is that piece of wood? And why are people unhappy? Who is unhappy? Is this house here is unhappy because they don't have fuel? Well, you just have to wait for fuel to arrive. Where is the ox with that piece of wood? I can't spot him. He is here, so nobody has gone to get that piece of timber. Um, because I'm worried it might be bugged, I think I know what the problem is. The piece of timber we want is in the saw pit. Uh, so we're actually going to have to cut down another tree to get the manor house completed, which has slowed us down considerably. I wish I'd caught that earlier. Um, the piece of wood that, that is unassigned is actually here in the saw pit. So we need another piece of wood and they should grab that. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Another interesting thing is the game is saying that we have two empty houses worth of space, but I only have this burgage plot here. Every other one has somebody living in it. I haven't built another one, so it may or not have noticed even though these people have moved in, it might be saying that they haven't. I'm not sure what's happening. Okay, Ox is moving. Ox has a log. Don't know where that came from. I'm not complaining. We now have everything we need to finish the manor house. Whew. Well, perhaps it was simply a bad bet. These things do happen from time to time. Okay, they're going to fit. Man okay, pause the game. Manor House is completed. We've just picked up 250 influence. We can now assign policies. So the first policy we're going to assign is a land tax policy. We're going to take 20% of all of the money that people collect from regional wealth and put it into our treasury. That has to happen. The only loan we have access to is to tithe. That gives a percentage of surplus food is given to the church in return for influence. We are going to need that, but right now our food sources are just a little bit too low for me to want to risk losing any of that. Now we have one family unassigned at the moment. What we're going to do is we're going to move the logging camp out to here. We're also going to move the woodcutter's lodge out to here. I actually not, don't actually want it there. I'll just demolish it and rebuild it. Mm, I don't think I can do that because I don't have the... Well, I think I will have the resources. Let's demolish that. I want to build it a little bit further over. So if we go to Gathering and Woodcutter's Lodge, we'll put it here on this side. Um, we're going to build a road that comes from here, sort of down. We'll just connect it up with this road here, like to here. We can't do that straight away. Okay, we need this, this log needs to be cleared before we can do that. And the other thing I want to do is I want to build two new hitching posts. I don't know if I have the timber for that. We'll wait for these to be built, but I want to build two new hitching posts over here so we have two oxes. Because I can spend the regional wealth, it's just as we earn it, we'll be taking some of it away. Okay, while we're waiting for that to happen, we do also now have access to our retinue. So let's get our retinue um, customized. Here's a retinue here. We currently have five soldiers. Heinz here is a fan of riddles and puzzles and has defeated foes. Um, Freidlin has a scar on his bottom that he claims was inflicted by a dragon. Uh, Nickel here steals anything that catches his eye. Bartholomew has a pet falcon that he uses for hunting and scouting. And Cunrad is a collector of rare boots. Uh, rare books, not rare boots. I can spend treasury to upgrade their armor or I can buy it locally. Um, I can also recruit people, but I can't do that right now. I can buy more people for 50 treasury as well. So worst case scenario, if we can't hire anyone, I could maybe recruit someone. I'm gonna quickly customize these guys to make them look like a bit more of a refined killing machine and I'll be right back. Okay, I give you the brave defenders of our town. We have Soren Stauchon with this crazy looking spear thing. Um, I'm not sure what it is. It 
I'd want to say it's a halberd, but it isn't. It has a spike on the end and a blade. Um, one of the guys in the threat new always seems to have this weapon rather than a one-handed weapon. Then we have Sealed Sun, and I've kind of put everyone in the same armor, but I've left them with their color things. So Sealed Sun has a sword and a shield. We have Bio Golem with a sword and a shield. We have T-Ram with a sword and a shield, and we have Nook with a sword and a shield. So um, they are ready to defend us when the time comes. They will be our main form of defense, but we also need more. Okay, I've got to worry that time has ticked on while I've been in that menu. It has, which is a little bit concerning. I didn't realize the game didn't pause while I was doing that, and it took me a little bit of time, but that's okay. We'll be fine. Um, we haven't picked up anything in the treasury yet, so the, the month hasn't ticked over. Uh, we have 99 days to get this up and running. As soon as the supplies are clear, I'll be able to build this road. In fact, I might just... I want to build it from here. I actually want to delete this road here. And then what I want to do is bring this road along to connect up with the back of the church here. And then I'll connect it around and then I like into this crossroads here. Just so we have like a generic road at the back. And then I want to link up basically here with back here. I could do something like that. That's not ideal, but it is a road and it's a little bit more natural, I guess. Okay, right. What do we need to do next? I want to re, I want to move the saw pit as well. We're not going to be building it in the saw pit right now. So I'm going to relocate that out to over here because it just needs to be near the wood. Um, I mean, I could put it, I could keep it near the storehouse actually because planks need to go there. I definitely don't want it here. Let's move it to here for now. Um, so it'll get moved over. And I also want to, once I've got the timber for it, which I don't want to spend until these are built, I want to build a two hitching posts out here and I'll delete this hitching post. You can relocate hitching posts, but I've had lots of bugs, especially when I've got two oxen with moving hitching posts and I'm not getting assigned properly to them. So I'm just gonna play it safe and I wanna delete this rebuilding hitching posts. Okay. Um, we also have people moving into the castle, so we should probably name them as well. Uh, I'll do that when we get our next family moving into the town, however. I don't think, okay, actually, we have lots of people unassigned right now. So we must have had a family move in while I was um, in that menu as well. If I check here, there's no family in here. So it must be the family, it must be the family that's actually in the manor counts as a family that can work, which is interesting. I guess it's, you know, they're saying residing family servant. I haven't really played with this too much. We need to name all of the people who are in the, the houses here. Um, like I say, I'll do that, I think, when we get a family moving in here. It does mean that I can assign some people. Let's get a team working in the, I should have demolished the hunting camp. I'm just a little bit unsure about that carcass issue we've got there. It's been sitting there for a long time. And I'll just build a new hunting camp right next to it. It's not actually take up any space here. We'll just turn it like this. Um, it's a little bit hard to see when it's that zoomed out, actually. I want it to clip onto the end of the road. I think it's going to. It's going to snap like that. That should be fine. Um, we'll get them assigned to that hunting camp as well. Um, and then we'll get some more food and hides coming in. Because the tannery at the moment, I don't think it's any hides to work off. Are there any eggs? Yeah, eggs have now made it into the food stalls as well, which is gonna help with our approval. And what I wanna do is get every one of our basic jobs, someone working in it, and then we can work out from then. Probably wanna upgrade our granary and our storehouse at some point. We do have a lot of goods in the storehouse. Uh, log piece, traditional resource. I've never seen that one before at all. Okay, let's speed up time. Lumber mill is almost under construction. And we need to actually start looking at industry as well. So from industry, we're going to need a bloomery soon, which will turn our iron ore into iron slabs. Um, and then we can build a smithy, which produces tools. And I think we need tools in order for our blacksmith to be able to do anything. Loving camp is constructed. We'll get a family assigned to that. Now that that's done, I will also build our, I'll assign our two hitching posts, one either side of this road. I think it's the best place to put them. And then once they are built, we can, excellent, we've got a wood cutting lodge built as well. Get some woodcutters on the go. Once they're built, we'll remove the hitching post and we will buy a new ox. Okay, as long as we get some treasury, things are looking good. Okay, new month, we gained, we earned 15 treasury. So that's not gonna go very close to a mercenary company. The mercenary companies this month are costing 45, 90, and 90. The Wayward Sons is probably, oh, the Wayward Sons is two heavy mercenary archers, light mercenary archers. The Green Caps, Mercer Infantry and Archers, the Crazy Geese, Light Infantry, Light Spearmen, Light Archers. Nothing I really want. I wanted like a small unit of Archers, really. That's probably the most affordable. Oh, okay. Now that we're heading into winter, fuel is going to be harder to gain, which is going to slow us down. Let's just hope we can hold out. What else can I spend regional wealth on to help us? There are a few little upgrades here and there we can spend on. For instance, we can get a um, herb garden in the forager hut. What I think that does is it produces herbs so that when your people get sick, they recover faster. 
Okay, firewood stall is done. I need someone to assign to the wood... The, no, the firewood stall is fine. The firewood stall is from the woodcutter's hut. So they built a new firewood stall because the old one wasn't connected to anything anymore. Clothing, food, warehouse worker. Okay, that's, that's all good. Here comes the snow. So we're going to see the countryside change as the snow comes in. I'm really worried that we're not going to get enough treasury. This is the most important thing here. How much iron do we have available for sale? Four for iron. We need more iron available for sale. That's a big one. What we'll do eventually is we'll probably get a horse um, that we can use. Well, actually, what I'll maybe do is leave this hitching post. No, I'll be able to new. I hope we build a stable next to the trading post and assign a horse to it. I think that helps speed up trade. Sawpit's been moved. That's great. I'm not going to do anything about that right now, but that has freed up some space there. What we'll do eventually, um, because this is still not being moved into, right? Yeah, is we'll put another burbage here, burgage here, and then we'll build a road to cover what it's not covering. <sighs> Just calm down. We are hopefully okay. Here comes the snow moving in, though. It's very pretty, especially if you look on the far horizon as the whole world just gets white. Something I haven't spoken about, by the way, is this region actually has a destroyed town over here. Um, there is the remains of a windmill and a granary on this side that we can actually demolish to get some supplies out of. But again, that's not urgent. Uh, one thing I do want to do, I think, is I need to worry about the logging camp cutting down this area here. But if I go into advanced, I can um, just limit their work area to a certain region and I'll tell them to work over here. And I think I can do the same thing for the woodcutters lodge as well. Um, just so they're not cutting down the area around the berries. I don't know if that'll affect them or not. I don't want to worry about it. Bandits are starting to be a problem. They just stole a lot of firewood from us. That is not good at all. Um, are hitching posts built yet? Yes, they are. Okay, I'm going to order a new ox. And I'm going to delete this hitching post. And that will relocate the other ox over there. Um, and that means we've got two oxes over there so that when we're removing logs they're moving a lot more simply okay everything that needs to be constructed has been constructed so i can now assign um okay no one has built the hunting camp yet and i'm going to assign them to the hunting camp when it's finished cool and the snow is here it kind of crept in when i wasn't even noticing but now the whole world is white and that is really counting down how much time we have left 78 days until the raiders are here 78 days until the end of the world essentially Will we be able to defend the town or will this whole playthrough fall apart when the raiders come? That is the question. Every month we get our taxes and that's the only thing we have to protect ourselves with. We need another family to move in soon. Okay, that's the hunting camp done. We're going to assign a family to the hunting camp. That'll get us some more food coming in. At the moment we have nobody assigned to construct anything, but we have nothing under construction. Our little market's looking quite cute. I like it with the snow on top of the tents. Someone's building something over here. Oh, I think there's a new stall being built. Yeah, I think there was a firewood, food. So there's two firewood stalls now. That's fine with me. We've got three houses that are unhappy. You don't have access to fuel. So firewood is the biggest concern people have. That should start coming in. We now have the two oxes available. Um, as the woodcutters start to cut stuff down, that should start coming in and we should be okay. Whew, December's going to tick over very soon. We should get our next amount of taxes. I haven't seen a lot of money come through the trading post, although we are up to 95 regional wealth, so we maybe sold something. We've got 10 iron here at the moment. I could buy a horse for 30, but we need to build another hitching post or a stable for that horse to live in. We could put it back here. I'm still not sure entirely what the horse will do for the trading post, but it is something that we can assign to it, so who knows. We have 10 working families in our town. At the start of this video, we had five. So we've doubled the size of our town in just the time we've been watching. That's another 30 income, that's good. Let's see what happens when the month ticks over. This, <laughs> this feels to me like that period when you're playing Xenonauts or XCOM, when you're kind of waiting for the, the monthly payment to come in so you can upgrade your, your town. That's what, they upgrade your base. That's what it feels like to me. That's a trader coming in. This is the, is this a trader? No, this is, this is our new ox coming in. Um, what is full? I think it's probably the sawmill. Yeah, the sawmill's full. Okay, we're definitely having money coming in. We should hopefully get a decent amount of taxes here. Fingers crossed we get a good payout. Because I think the guys come at the end of January. So we've only got basically two months worth. We're 60 days out. Yeah, they're going to come at the end of January. We've got five days left in this month. No, they might come at the end of February, judging by the 60 days left. So we, we could actually be in a better position than we think we are. How are we doing for stuff? Okay. What we might want to look at building or just getting constructed when a new family arrives is getting our bloomery under construction. 
I think we build the bloomery out here near the iron mining pit so they can fill it up straight away. It obviously means that we're not going to be selling as much iron because it's not going to get to the storehouse. Um, but that's fine because we, we won't be needing the regional wealth at that point. Um, we've got a lot of regional wealth building up. We can use it to upgrade these houses when we're ready to upgrade them. And another important thing is when we upgrade these houses to be a blacksmith, a boyer, a cloakmaker, etc., those people leave the general employment pool. So we'll be losing jobs in more of our peasant places. So we also need more houses to kind of cover them as well. Okay, January just rolled around. We have not gotten any taxes yet. That's a bit concerning. I would have expected it to come in with the start of January. Okay, there we go. We've got 43 now. That's enough for the cheapest mercenary company, I think. Um, so we can't afford the Wayward Sons, we can't afford anyone yet, but that's okay, we don't need to hire them this month. We need to hire them in 59 days. Uh, we're basically nothing we can do until a new family arrives, so we're going to fast forward at max speed. And see when they move in. We should get a family in January, although our approval has crashed because people are not happy about taxes, that's right. There should be enough good things in town though that taxes aren't that much of a problem for people. And I can drop the taxes once we've got these mercenaries, but we need the taxes right now. Let's just keep an eye on our approval. It should start going up once the month resets. I really just want that one more family. That would make a big difference. So we can start constructing again. Everyone's just being busy, doing their thing, which is nice to watch. This says that we don't have any space. But we don't have a family in this Burbage plot. That's, no, we're not building any additional space. That's what that's saying. That's okay. The plus one. I always think there's, there's usually a plus one next to that if you're building a new house. For some reason, I thought it meant there wasn't room for someone to move into, but it, it's fine. There is room for someone to move in. Okay, we now have 100 firewood. Um, we're down to one meat, but that should start going back up again. Um, 19 timber is a lot of timber, which is nice. We could probably actually remove people from the logging camp for now. Get them to do something else. So let's get our bloomage under construction. Just so that it's done. Our bloomery will build over here. Take a while to build that. Uh, malt house turns barley into... But we also need to get a... We also need to get a clay furnace to make clay tiles. Which means we also need to get a mining pit on our clay deposit. Which is over here. Um, we do need to start producing some clay. Because we want to upgrade our church. So let's get that under construction too. And we'll connect that up to the road. What I'll do is I'll slope it in like this. Was that the bloomery built already? Bloomery's been built already. Amazing. We're not going to sign anyone to the bloomery yet. Approval's up to 57%, which means we should hopefully get some people moving in. It's now February. We now have 78 treasury. The raiders are coming at the end of the month. What we should be able to do is, if we're lucky, we can wait until the start of March, get our taxes from March, and then hire our mercenaries. And we should be able to get a decent defense. And we'll have those mercenaries for the whole month. So we can maybe afford to kill one of the bandit camps with them as well. That's the plan. But the winter has ended. The, the, all the um, snow is going to start to fade away. The berries are going to start to regrow. And where the demand for firewood is going to go right down. One thing we could actually also build, now that I think about it, while we've got the resources for it, is we've unlocked charcoal kilns. Um, I think it's in... Where are the charcoal kilns? That's a sheep farm... Are they under here? Yeah, we've unlocked the charcoal kiln. So why don't we get a charcoal kiln up and running next to our woodcutter? Um, and that'll make our next winter a lot easier. Oh yeah, the puppy's still unfortunately a little bit unhappy. I'm not sure what's up with her. I'll check on her after the video. I have checked on her a few times while recording it and she's very, very happy and then I leave her alone. And she's welcome to come in here. Her bed's set up next to me. The door's open. She can wander at any time. But I think she, I think the problem is she's barking at birds. Because um, the back door's open so she can wander in the back garden and I think she's barking at them. Okay, we're going to fast forward until the end of this month. There's not a huge amount to do. We just need more citizens at this point. I want to have somebody working in the charcoal kin. I want to have somebody working in the bloomery before we upgrade. And that means we need another five families because we need to replace these three families as well when we upgrade their burgages. 78 should be enough to get the mercenaries we need. That's not good. We had iron stone on my bandits. We really need to do something about these bandits as soon as possible. Um, our, our approval is up. We'll lower the taxation after this month as well. Um, that's a charcoal kiln built, but we've got nobody to assign to it. What we could actually do is unassign the woodcutters and assign them to the charcoal kiln, and they can start turning our wood our wood into charcoal because uh, we've got quite a lot of it stockpiled, and that would make that makes us just for a much more efficient fuel source, um, especially if we're going to be burning stuff in the bloomery and in the blacksmith. 
I think that's a good idea. We could also look at getting a blacksmith built out here as well. We're just kind of laying the foundations. We don't actually have any of this stuff available to us yet. But putting a smithy out here too just means that the um, the production chain is all kind of close together. And uh, they can, once we've got people to put into these places, we can start getting them. While away though. Okay, let's get the speed going forward again. Eight days until they come. We definitely want to slow down when it gets down to one. I'm taking a big risk here hiring the mercenaries after the start of the month, but we should be okay because they'll come in from off map. Five, four, another bandit camp just got built. Where is that? Oops, I hate it when that happens. Okay, so there's a bandit camp in this corner here and there's a bandit camp. Where is the other bandit camp? There's two on the map. Bandit camp all the way back here. Okay. Interesting. Both quite far away from us. A little bit awkward to get at, right? Four days until the attack. We'll just go for it at fast forward speed. Just want to wait for this next income of the treasury. And we're going to have to drop the track station because it's stopping people moving in. That's what I've noticed. But the town is definitely like taking that next step to autonomy, which I really like to see. That music is a little bit concerning, though. It's like we're on the edge of losing, which I don't think we are. Two days until March. You can see down here, Raider attack in two days. The smithy's been constructed. Excellent. So we need a family to... Band of Raiders. Okay, stop. The Raiders have arrived. Where are they coming in from? I don't see them yet. It said Nusselho. So they're coming in from over here somewhere. They haven't arrived on the map yet. I'm just... We need to wait for that taxation to tick over. Which it will do very soon. If it doesn't tick over before they get here... There they are. They're coming in from here. So it's two units of brigands, I think is what the, yeah. Whoops, there was a save there. So we've got one unit of brigands has arrived. I think there's gonna be another one behind them. Or is it just 18 brigands? If it's just 18 brigands, we should be okay. Okay, they are here. It is one day to the new month. As I said, I really want to wait for that taxation to arrive, but I don't think I can afford to. I think we're gonna have to hire the mercenaries now. I don't think I can afford to wait until next. But no, if I hire the mercenaries now, the month will tick over and I'll lose them. We have to wait until March before we hire them. Otherwise, I have to pay them straight away, I think. This is where it gets tense. This is where it gets really ring. They are coming to kill us. Come on, tick I, I don't want to speed time up because we're one day from March and I want to hire these mercenaries the second I can. As soon as the game says new mercenaries are available, that's when I can hire them. There's nothing I can do until then. Oh, I'm, I'm really worried. Firewood. Come on. Okay. First things first, just so I don't forget to do it, I'm dropping the taxes to 10%. We have 115 in our treasury. What can we hire with that? Okay, we've got the Wayward Sons. We've got the Flock of Crazy Geese or the Ravenous Vultures. The Wayward Sons are two units of archers. Um, usually the region handling from the west in the region of Francia. Their customs and tongue are strange. They rarely mix with the locals, spending what money they acquire in taverns and retrieving nurse their drinks in the deep woods. Or we can get the flock of crazy geese. I think the flock of crazy geese are too much. I think the wayward sons are exactly what we want right here. Um, so we're going to hire this company. Sign the contract. And they're going to come in from off map. The next thing we need to do is we need to raise our retinue. So we will rally them. Um... We're going to put them in the path of these brigands. So this is probably going to be our battlefield here outside these forests. It looks like it's directly on the path. So we're going to rally our retinue to here. Um, now, what I could also actually do is, now that I think about it, let's close this. Um, can we still customize them when they're on the move? No. Uh, damn. What I need to do then is disband. I can't disband outside of home region, but they're not in there. Well, I need to disband them because I can actually spend some of our treasury on upgrading them as well. Where are they? Here they are. Okay, let's just span them really quickly. And then we're going to go into customize. And what we'll do is we'll buy some armor. So Nook, you're going to get you're going to get some upgraded armor on import. That's got you up to um, looking a lot more knightly. And I think we can get you the same helmet that Hooded Horse sent me. So you're going to use that helmet. We're going to upgrade T-Rem as well. Um, T-Rem has a cool helmet automatically. We'll keep that one as yours. Let's also upgrade Bio Golem. Um, interesting choice, Bio Golem. You can stick with that. And how much do I have left? I've got 16. So I don't have enough, I think, to level anyone else up. No. So it's going to be you three are going to be our knights in the front line. And we'll see how else it goes. Now I will um, re-rally them. And they will have all their new equipment. And then we also need to identify where are these guys. They are coming in 
They're not that far away. We need to get them to run, which will make them tired, but we need to get them here fast. So run to position, and I need you to get to here as fast as possible. And we also need these guys. These guys don't need to run, they can walk. Okay, so let's check them out. Here they come. So these are the closest thing we'll get to professional soldiers in this era, from what I understand, apart from actual mercenaries. They are our red new, they are here to defend us. And they are on their way to the front line. And then we also have, of course, our archers. So this a unit of light mercenary archers and a unit of heavy mercenary archers. I'm not sure what a heavy mercenary archer is. I think they've got chainmail rather than just wearing rags. Look at all the deer running away from them because they're running through a, uh, um, a deposit. This is a lot of firepower. We should hopefully be fine. I think the archers are probably going to break them before they get to us. What we'll do is we'll get them to maybe take out this bandit camp as well once the battle is formed. But the battle has to happen first. Now we're only getting a minus... Well, I don't think the taxation malice will change until next month. So we're going to have to wait till next month before we can start getting people moving in again. Uh, and then we can start working on growing the town once these brigands have been dealt with. How far away are they? There's still a little bit away. We can afford to fast forward a little bit, I think. They are coming. As long as our archers get here before they do, but because they're running, they will. They'll be tired, but they're not going to be doing any actual fighting in close combat. We're going to leave that to the Bob's Burgers retinue. So the archers should be fine. For those of you who aren't aware, this game has a very has, has very nice combat mechanics. For instance, I can just drag and um, arrange these units. It's a little bit hard to see against the snow, but I can arrange them into firing lines, maybe too deep behind our our retinue, who I can set up here in a line. I actually want them to do this because one of those guys is a second rank fighter, and then we're going to move into position. How far away are the brigands? They're getting close. These guys are going to rest. These guys are coming through the forest. That's excellent. They'll be here in time. And we will fight, actually, I actually, what I want to do is looking at the slope of this, what I want to do is I want to take our archers and I want to put them in front of this windmill, put them in two ranks of two, and then we'll put our retinue in front of them. And we can probably get them to walk at this point. They're set to fire at will, um, shoot at will. Yeah, that's all good. And then there's different commands we can give. We can give ground, we can do a missile alert, um, we can stand your ground, we can push forward, we can tell them to spread out if they're being attacked by missile units, um, tell them to hold, tell them to run, etc. So the one problem we have is that these guys, um, combat effectiveness is really low right now because they're not in formation and they're also tired, but they will have time to rest before the brigands get here. Although not that much time looking at it, the brigands will be here soon. It looks like they, yeah, they're all carrying their, their bows. How cool does this look? They also got their banners as well. I really love the banners. Just make adds so much to the game, I think. And with the snow kind of fading away as they're getting into position. Maybe want to set them up on the brow of this hill. Now that everyone's here, I can play around a little bit more with formations. So let's actually set them up along here where we've got a little bit more flat ground. And again, I want them to be too deep. And then I want to get our red new in front of them. And it's uh, mid-March. You've got to remember that they will leave us unless we have 45 to pay them at the end of the month. 23 days left until they leave. How far away are the brigands? The brigands are getting very close. They will be in range soon. We're probably going to engage them as they come out of these trees. I'm going to fast forward until they get closer. And we'll get everyone to rest. So these guys' effectiveness is still pretty low. You can see their range there as well, but their effectiveness is going up as they are resting. I don't think we need to worry too much about them having low effectiveness, honestly because we're only dealing with 18 brigands here. The range isn't that as far as I thought it was gonna be. We actually maybe want to just do something a little bit like this. Hang on. Something like this. So they're kind of like facing into a, a bucket that the brigands are heading into and we're gonna hold our retinue. So these guys are now neutral. These guys are still um, a little bit tired. I, it makes sense if they're the heavy archers. They've actually got armor. Whereas these guys are just in tabards and got helmets. And then we have the brave five defenders of Bob's Burgage ready for combat. Um, we need to change their formation slightly. I need to remember to set it as a four and one so that, um, who is this at the back? Oh, it's actually gonna set it properly. Oh, we'll just set them as a five then. He should be in the back row then because he has a reach weapon. I'm sure someone will comment and tell me what that weapon is. I don't don't recognize it. My head wants to say it's like an early, an early, um, an early halberd, but I don't think it is. 
Here come the brigands. They're going to get into range soon. They're just coming over the hill. We'll see them breach through the forest in a second. Yep, here they come. They're coming through the forest. They've got the high ground, but we have the numbers. They'll also be quite tired because they've been traveling for a long time. Let's see what our archers think about this. They should be starting to get ready. This is going to be a bloodbath. I don't think we need to worry too much here. This is where you want to commission a song. Like the Battle the battle of Bob's Burgers, the first it can Now, one problem we do have is they are, there's a tree in the way here. We're already firing. They're running in. We're only going to get a couple of shots. Oh, look at the look at that. Those are all hitting. They're coming at these archers here. These ones here are about to open fire. Okay, our soldiers here already. We're going to order them to attack. And that's a nice star charge. And they instantly broke. Four of them are running away. And that is the first battle. Not much of a battle for our province. We did it. We've made it through the first year. I can't believe we actually did it. The game's saving right now. I can't believe this has worked. We started with absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. And we now have our cute little town. And we have an actual army able to defend ourselves. We have them for another 18 days. So in our next video, we're going to try and take out this bandit camp with them if we can. Um, or maybe this bandit camp is a little bit closer. I'll work it out. I'm going to end this video here. I think it's been more than long enough. But we can move on to the next stage, which is upgrading to level 2 now. And starting to produce our own weapons and armor and getting our own peasants to defend ourselves. And we can work at starting to claim some regions away from our enemy. We've got 600. Look how much influence we got from that. We can almost at the level we can start claiming some other territory sectors and expanding ourselves into new regions. Whew. I'm really enjoying this playthrough. This is a really fun way to play the game. If you're thinking maybe the standard way is a little bit too easy, try this. This is this is tense and fun. All right. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to be villaged or villagerist, um, make sure to comment on the video. Let me know what you think we should maybe call our second region and um, what kind of equipment loadouts or customization should I give to our, uh, our retinue as well. For now, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Ciao for now.